Welcome to Pirate King. I'm Daniel, a software engineer at Microsoft, ex-software engineer at Amazon and eBay, and also a software engineering mentor at two educational startups. In this video, I'm going to talk about what many of you guys have been waiting for, what it's like to work at Microsoft. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be brutally honest about what I think of working here. Most importantly, I'm not going to take sides. I'm not going to blatantly talk favorably about Microsoft just because I work here, nor talk adversely against it when I do believe it's noteworthy. I'm a guy who hates bias myself. I always try to think objectively and rationally wherever I am and whatever I do. And neither of you nor I have the time for any bullshit other than the fully disclosed transparency here. This is what I think, what I feel, exactly how I see it through my lens. So enough talking, let's dive into it. So I work at Microsoft in Redmond, Washington, which is where the headquarters is. Although the office has been closed for more than a year and a half now due to the pandemic, I still remember vividly the day I first set my foot in Building 50, one of the buildings in the campus. It was a cold day in January of 2018. and. It was raining, as always. I mean, this is Seattle. I was here for the final on-site interview. And the first thing that blew me away as I entered the office building is all these private offices lined up in the hallway. That's right. Although Microsoft is also shifting towards an open space work environment, thanks to companies like Google and Facebook, quite a good number of buildings in the campus are still packed with private offices that are meant for each individual employee. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've never heard about a company that provides a private office for each employee, especially for an ordinary, non-manager, unimportant individual contributor like me. I was like, wow, I get my own office when I work in Microsoft? In fact, that's how the interviews were like. A one-on-one -on -one interview in each of the interviewers' own room. Do you now get why I tried so hard to ace my interviews at Microsoft? Don't get me wrong. It's not like I set up my productivity couch setup in my private office at Microsoft. But for a guy like me, who likes to work quietly alone by himself, it definitely was mind blowing. Not to mention that my dream was short lived and shattered soon after I joined Microsoft. Because about three months after I joined the company, a massive rework happened and my team relocated to an open space. F my life. The second thing I realized that I thought was completely opposite to Amazon is the average length of tenure, where presumably half the population quits Amazon within about a year. Check this video for details on that. All five employees who interviewed me that day had worked for Microsoft for more than 10 years. <laughs> Again, draw a contrast with Amazon because they even give you different colored badges, starting with more than five years of tenure. The interviewers at Microsoft were all senior levels too, whereas some of those at Amazon had even less experience than I did back then. And you can even immediately tell just by looking that the average age group is much younger at Amazon. A lot more singles at Amazon, a lot more people with a family at Microsoft. Now that I think about it, it may be obvious why I feel Microsoft takes better care of your family than Amazon. Here's what I find similar for both Microsoft and Amazon. You know, the coworkers in both Microsoft and Amazon are no fun. Hear me out though, they are no fun for different reasons. Amazon coworkers are no fun because simply there's no time to be. We were never coworkers in the first place, constantly competing against each other. The people at Amazon are a lot more stylish than those at Microsoft, you know? They're all young, more hip, cool, swag, fancy, and all that, but there's simply no time to enjoy all that. You're either too busy fighting the work or fighting each other. They're simply too cool for you. In contrast, coworkers at Microsoft are no fun because there's simply no fun. I think they honestly and sincerely believe that they are fun. You know, hip, cool, swag, fancy, and all that, but I honestly don't find a single one of them funny at all. There's simply no fun. One of my interviewers at Microsoft, I honestly thought he was a robot disguised as a human. No offense. <laughs> and you know what's funny? The Microsoft employees, especially the engineers who are watching this, are probably thinking, this guy's joking. I'm not one of them. He's making this up for laughs. Well, you know what? I'm talking about you. You know, if there's one thing that working from home has drastically improved upon the quality of my life, is the fact that I don't have to fake my laughs anymore because I no longer see them in person. All right, enough about the people. Let's talk about the technologies. All the employees at Microsoft are given a PC, no Mac. 
I guess that's obvious, right? Here's a list of some of the technologies and products that Microsoft is working on. Windows Operating System, Productivity Suite, you know, things like Microsoft Office, Teams, Outlook, OneDrive, Power BI, Azure for cloud computing, Xbox for gaming, consumer hardware like the Surface lineup, LinkedIn for professional social networking, GitHub for source control, development software such as Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, programming languages like C Sharp, F Sharp, and TypeScript, and some things even their own employees try to avoid such as Cortana, Bing, Edge and HoloLens, etc. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And for your information, I'm part of Azure. For all software engineers out there, here's the tech stack Microsoft uses for most of web development. Let's start with the front end. Only until a few years ago, we used a thing called Razor. It's an ASP.NET programming syntax to fabricate HTML and CSS using C Sharp. It was all right until the microservice architecture paradigm dominated the current industry and laid out a clear distinction between front and back end. But then came Google's AngularJS and Microsoft began to slowly adjust to the new paradigm. And when the time came for all of us to celebrate the successful transition and migration to Angular for the major web front end revamp, there came Facebook with React.js, quickly rendering all our efforts obsolete. Why? Because our goal now is to successfully transition and migrate everything to React from Angular. Among developers, there's a saying that your product is deprecated as soon as it's released. I think it's true in most cases, but maybe not for React given its vast popularity. Long story short, I think it's quite safe to say that Microsoft has accepted the current trend and adopted React.js as the main framework for front end. Oh, I almost forgot. It's Angular and React with TypeScript, not JavaScript, because it's good for maintaining large applications. Plus, Microsoft developed TypeScript. So that's front end. What about the back end? Microsoft gave birth to ASP.NET and C Sharp. And again, for the same reason, pretty much every back end is written in C Sharp. That means no Node.js, no Spring, no Ruby on Rails, and saying goodbye to Python's Django and Flask. Just C Sharp. I'll list out the pros and cons of this later in this video. But to be honest though, I really think that C Sharp is a very good language. I honestly think it's the best strongly and statically typed language out there, even better than Java. It's a little out of scope to talk about the reason here. I'll maybe talk about it in some other video. But the reasons why I didn't include it in this video, the best programming languages to liquid with, are because one, the community resources, including the solutions in C Sharp, are still relatively scarce. And two, there's no built in library for a priority queue. Nonetheless, there's still an ongoing effort to migrate and host every backend on Azure internally. So every team is responsible for budgeting their own cloud usage, even for internal Microsoft only services. Now, let's talk about the perks in Microsoft. You can check them out yourself too if you want. They're all available in public. Link in the description below. And by the way, when employers say they care about you, your well being, and your family's well being, etc., you can estimate how much they mean it by simply looking at the company's benefits. If they're serious about you and your family's wellness, if they truly care about you, there's no doubt that it should well be reflected on the company benefits, whether that be medical, financial, time offs, etc. That's the metric I use to measure the degree of how sincere a company is about why I work from one in the first place to protect my family. At least that's what I think. Having said that, let's see if Microsoft truly cares about me. I'll leave the decision up to you guys. And here they are. The best medical, dental, vision healthcare I've seen so far. The company pays for 100% of the insurance cost, which is well over $14,000 a year for my case. Thanks, Microsoft. A paid annual gym membership or up to $1,200 reimbursement for wellness related expenses per year. I honestly would have built my own gym if I owned a house, but sadly, I live in an apartment. And I use this money instead to get myself a new snowboard. 15 paid vacation days, 10 paid US holidays, two personal time offs every year, 10 paid sick leaves per year banked on day one of employment. And you don't have to be sick yourself to go on a sick leave. Here's the definition. You can use sick and mental health time for the following family members, spouse or domestic partner, parent and child, parent-in-law, grandparent and grandchild, sibling, spouse of a sibling or grandparent, and even guardians. No wonder why people here get sick every once in a while. 401k matched 50% up to the IRS basic deferral limit. In 2021, that's $19,500. So if you contribute that amount, Microsoft matches $9,750, allowing you to save $29,250 towards your retirement every year. ESPP, Employee Stock Purchase Program, which allows you to buy some Microsoft tickers at 10% discount. Employee discounts on Microsoft products, for example, about 80% discount on software such as Office and Windows, about 15% discount on hardware 
hardware such as Surface and Xbox. Free product keys for most Microsoft software and $150 Azure credit every month, which I use to host my own personal bookkeeping app on the web. Link to the video in the description. Subsidized food, breakfast and lunch, free coffee, free soda, a bunch of retail shops on campus, including haircut, postal service, telecommunications, bike shops, etc. On campus basketball court, soccer field, table tennis, foosball table, a tree house, a private office if you're lucky enough to avoid open space office buildings, all of which don't really matter right now since they are all closed or unusable due to the pandemic. Also, contrary to the popular beliefs, there's no free food, no internet, no phone, nor Netflix reimbursements. Lastly, I've been saving this for the last. There's one very unique benefit in culture that Microsoft cultivated and one I've never seen anywhere else before, and that is giving. Basically, they match dollar for dollar on what you give as a donation to eligible charity, nonprofit organization. For example, if I donate $100 to fight racial injustice such as Black Lives Matter, Microsoft will match another $100 to the same organization that I donate to, allowing me to contribute a total of 200 bucks to the same cause. It's something very unique and special about Microsoft, which I honestly believe makes the company stand out more and shine brighter. You know, whether you agree or disagree with giving or not, isn't it just heartwarming to be a part of the world's greatest philanthropic minds reflected in the company's very own benefits and culture? Technically, you lose your own money when you give, but it's a benefit when you share. All right, lastly, let's quickly talk about the pros and cons of working at Microsoft. Let's start with the pros. One, competitive salary. Um, I'd say it's all right. I mean, there are a number of other companies that pay you better, such as Google and Facebook and numerous other Silicon Valley startups. Two, great benefits. Three, private office if you like working quietly alone and if you're lucky enough to avoid open space offices. Four, great work and life balance. It's quite chill and relaxed here. Five, great name value. The company name speaks for itself and provides a substantial protection. Six, great growth opportunity. I've grown and learned a lot since my day one at Microsoft, although I think that growth has stagnated now. What about the cons? One, there's not much freedom in choosing the tech stack. Because the company builds the tech stack themselves, we have no option but to use the ones they designate. It's like how you won't get a Mac in Microsoft or a PC at Apple. Similarly, you're stuck with TypeScript, C Sharp, and Azure for your tech stack. That means saying goodbye Python, Node.js, Express.js, Django, Flask, AWS, Heroku, Docker, Jira, etc. There are teams that use those languages or frameworks but are very limited in numbers. Two, you basically become a lab rat to test out Microsoft US products or updates just before or shortly after their release, which obviously still need a lot of work. You have to deal with the software's malfunctions and bugs yourself, report them if necessary, even though these have nothing to do with what you do. Three, bureaucracy. There are so many freaking rules and pipelines that I honestly think are there simply to make your life more miserable. I need an approval for this, a sign off for that, a permission to deploy, send a request to access certain resources, blah, blah, blah. What's worse? You Send out a request for a sign off, but no one does it for hours or even days. And hey, who's still held accountable if you can't complete the work because no one's responded to your request? For security. Now, I'm not going to dive into detail because, you know, I can't disclose the confidential stuff, but let me just tell you that I thought this was Pentagon when I first came here. There are so many authentications, passwords, combinations, mechanisms I need to remember and install to do whatever. I mean, that's how serious Microsoft is about security, and that's how miserable our lives are due to it. Five, work is so chill and relaxed that nobody will answer your emails or IMs. You know, it's simply none of their business. Lastly, six, you have to deal with all sorts of non-coding related shit. These are the stuff that I hate the most, even more than working on front end. Infrastructure setups, configurations, project settings, security compliances, all sorts of other random shit. What's worse? Dealing with bugs you have no knowledge whatsoever. Here they hire an engineer paying six figures in salaries to have them fix broken pipelines and clean someone else's shit. Oh, actually seven. Too many fucking meetings. We even have meetings to discuss how to reduce the number of meetings. I actually can dig deeper into these cons and talk more about it. I'll maybe do it later in another video if you guys are interested.
All right, this is what I think about Microsoft. I tried my best to be 100% transparent, honest, and objective. In the end, overall, I think it's a great company. But as we all know, no company is perfect. So what do you guys think about Microsoft? Is it a great company to work for? Do you agree with all or some of the things I've outlined? Let me know in the comments below so that I can learn from you and gain as much insight as possible myself. Lastly, I thanked you guys in my previous video a week ago for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. I never expected to cross 10,000 subscribers a week after. Thank you again for the awesomeness. Hope my videos are enjoyable, fun, and insightful. I'll always try my best to keep them objective and sharp to the point. Don't forget to subscribe to access all these nitty-gritty secrets. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.